I am not ashamed. Who was Israel's second judge, and from which nation did he have to deliver Israel? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Judges on Walking Through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing Judges 3, verses 12 to 19, but before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Judges 3, verse 12, but if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Judges chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. And in the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord strengthened Eglon, king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. Then he gathered to himself the people of Ammon and Amalek, went and defeated Israel, and took possession of the city of Palms. So the children of Israel served Eglon, king of Moab, eighteen years. But when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for them, Ehud, the son of Gera, the Benjamite, a left-handed man. By him the children of Israel sent tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Ehud made himself a dagger. It was double-edged and cubit in length, and fastened it under his clothes on his right thigh. So he brought the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. And when he had finished presenting the tribute, he sent away the people who had carried the tribute. But he himself turned back from the stone images that were at Gilgal and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. He said, Keep silence. And all who attended him went out from him. We have now come to our period of judges. In our last lesson, we have determined that this period started in about 1350 BC. For a more detailed description of how we came to this conclusion, we invite you to listen to the last lesson, lesson links for which can be found at the end of the video if you're watching on YouTube. Alternatively, if you're not watching on YouTube, the lessons can be found on our YouTube channel, which we're showing now on the bottom of the screen. When Israel fell away the first time, God subjected them to a foreign power for eight years before Israel repented and called on God to deliver them. God raised up Othniel as their judge. He delivered Israel, and the land had rest for 40 years, meaning that Israel was faithful to God for that time period, during which time Othniel died. All told, this brings us down to about 1302 BC. From the language of the text, we can know that it is at this time that a new generation has arisen that did not know Othniel, or the trouble that Israel faced before Othniel, and so they went off into idolatry again. And like before, God was not going to tolerate Israel's idolatry, and so this time he sent Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel. Along with the Ammonites and the Amalekites, Eglon defeated Israel and took, the city, uh, took possession of the city of Palms, which would be Jericho. That the Moabites would be in league with the Ammonites and the Amalekites shouldn't surprise us, for not only were these nations neighbors, but Moab seemed to have a habit of doing things like this, as was evident 100 years before in Numbers 25 and the story of Balak, king of Moab, who at that time was in league with the Midianites. In capturing Jericho, Eglon put Israel under tribute, and there they remained for 18 years. I'd like us to note the first, that the first time Israel went off into idolatry and was subject to a foreign power, it took eight years before they repented, repented and called on God for deliverance. However, here the second time Israel was subjected to a foreign power, it took them 18 years in order to call on God for deliverance. Was it because Israel was getting more stubborn? Or that God decided that more punishment needed to be exacted before deliverance? I'm not sure which is, which is true, but it is interesting to note that the time between subjection and deliverance was longer here. With 18 years being under Moab's control, that takes us down to 1284 B.C. Responding to Israel's cries, God raised up a second judge, Ehud. Now, unlike Othniel, who, during, due to his relation to Caleb, was of the tribe of Judah, Ehud was a Benjamite. Another interesting thing about Ehud is that he is a left-handed man. Now, the scriptures wouldn't have pointed out such a seemingly insignificant fact unless, of course, it will be significant, which it will be later on in the story, which we will cover in the next lesson. Before going out to meet Eglon with the tribute money of Israel, Ehud made a dagger that was double-edged and a cubit in length, meaning about 18 inches, and stuck it under his clothes on his right thigh. Why would Ehud make a dagger that long? Well, he obviously thought he might need it, 
And what we find about, out about Eglon is that he was a very fat man. So having a longer blade, if Ehud intended to use it on Eglon, would be needed. Now we learn from the text that Ehud came to, with the tribute money to Gilgal, which from our study of Joshua we know is near Jericho, the city that Moab had captured and seemingly headquartered themselves in for the purpose of occupying Israel. When Ehud had given the tribute money to Eglon, he decided to send away the people who helped him bring that money because he wanted to talk to Eglon alone. What was the reason for this? He claimed to have a secret message for the king, and he only wanted the king to hear it. What was this message? We'll find out the Lord willing in the next lesson. With that, our time is up today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Judges chapter 3, verses 20 to 31. As we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.